okay and that's how the card actually looks like when it's set up on this z 490 dark kimpin so uh, the card is on the first pci express slot over there and the 360 radiator is sitting on top of this uh, uh, cd slash dvd box over there it's not the most optimal way to uh, run this cooling solution but it will have to do for now so don't install the 360 radiator like this when you set up this card in your case so uh, we have this nice EVGA Kimpin logo on the top uh, at the top part of the card and here's the uh, onboard display thing so it cycles through the main settings like GPU die temperature MSVDD NVDDD and it can even show like the uh, uh, power consumption of the card and so on so it's actually a very neat feature if you ask me so uh, but be aware that as this is an nvidia card one of the late latest generations do not expect much overclocking headroom with uh, just the standard bios and so on without doing any modifications as there's the very uh, known and heavy uh, power throttling that will happen very very soon if you start to raise uh, especially the voltage so uh, you can generally raise the clocks uh, by a bit but as soon as you touch the voltage at all it will start to throttle the same thing as the card if the card was overheating it will do the same thing as it thinks that the card is consuming too much power so uh, what we can do now is that we can actually go to the desktop and we can look at the a card how it runs in port royal by default like how the uh, uh, oled display shows the different parts of the card and how you can actually uh, change the settings what you can actually monitor with the thing so let's get going okay so 3d mark port royal is running now with just default settings on the card so when we look at the card itself we can see that the uh, uh, LED on top of the card doesn't really change with the actual load so it has the same color no matter if it's the card no matter if the card is at idle or under load and when we look at the OLED display we can see it monitors various things like RPM that's the GPU voltage so that's the NVVDD that's the real GPU voltage and I think it's measuring at the die power consumption of 430 watts roughly of course it changes of course it varies constantly and it has this weird like EVGA Kimbin logo uh, that shows up when uh, the setting is at default from time to time so uh, and that's the GPU die temperature the die temperature is a little bit different compared to the GPU temperature measurement in GPU Z or in EVGA precision so I think that should work even when the card is running on LN2 and I put the fans so the VRM fan as well as the radiator fans to 100% so this is like the worst case scenario in terms of noise and it and it's not really that loud if you ask me so uh, I've definitely seen graphics cards with much louder uh, uh, stock cooling fans so uh, when we look at when we just look at GPU Z we can see the uh, GPU clock so the maximum clock it ran during the run was 2115 but it of course it varies so we have like 2055 2070 2085 it varies constantly during the load and 1219 on the memory that doesn't vary and max temperature was 46 degrees so it's quite close to the gpu die sense measurement on the oled display and now i will now i will swap to the capture card and we can i will and i will show you how to they change the settings of the OLED display and by the way so the stock the, the score we got at stock was 43,054 so that already beat our 2080 Ti world record score by roughly 1,000 points so very nice score if you ask me okay so if you want to change the settings of the OLED display like you want to monitor the frame rate and other parts in the whole system you just have to download the EVGA Precision X1 so it st states GeForce RTX 3090 Kimpin Hybrid that's the real model name of this particular graphics card model so the main tab or the main screen includes all of the overclock settings like you can move the fans so the fan 1 is the radiator fans I believe and the fan 2 is the uh, the fan 2 is the VRM part the VRM fan which goes to semi-passive mode from time to time 
So for uh, the limited overclocking that you can do with just the standard pulse and so on, you should just move the sliders of the power and GPU temp to max. And we just click this left arrow key over here and we can find the OLED settings. So currently the mode is uh, default and you can also change the orientation from normal to reverse. So if you have like a case with reverse mounting, like the motherboard is upside down and therefore the graphics cards are upside, upside down, you can uh, swap the orientation of the OLED display to accommodate that heat, uh, that case design. So let's just go to from let's go from default to uh, oh you can even put a message hello. So you can put my own name for example and you can put the size like 24. So currently we have my name on the OLED display. So that's how it works. So you can change the color of the text as well and so on. Like uh, now it should appear in red. So now, now the text is in red. So that's how it works. And if we want to swap to the interesting part, which is the monitoring part of the OLED display, here are all the things you can monitor with the uh, OLED display. But just bear this in mind. So uh, GPU voltage is not the real GPU voltage. So if you want to measure the GPU voltage of the 3090 Kimpin, you have to select the NVVDD. That's the real GPU voltage. So NVVDD is the GPU voltage. FPVDD is the memory voltage. The PEX VDD is the PLL. Then we have that we should have the 12 volt as well as the GPU 1.8 volt. And the MSVDD is the new voltage that didn't exist on the previous generation of cards. 5 volt, 3.3. And the GPU die temp is the one we had already. So that's the uh, one you definitely want to have if you run the card on LN2, for example. So the GPU temperature measurement itself might just hang at zero when you go sub ambient, I mean, but you can still keep mod you can still keep following the uh, GPU temperatures if you select the GPU die temperature. So what I will do is I have these two. We might just disable the MSV DD for now. And we can put, for example, uh, GPU board power. We have VRM temperatures, so the power temperatures are the temperature probes at the MOSFET area, MEM temperature, fan speed, GPU usage, and let's put frame rate. So I will just put those, and now let's try to run Port Royal once again. And let's see how it cycles through the things. Okay, so now the free map for Royal is running once again, and if we move over... Oh, for some reason the frame rate thing doesn't work. Maybe it's a bug in the software itself, but that's the GPU voltage. So 1.1415, it changes a lot. 40.35 Celsius on the GPU, and power is 430 watts. I really like this power measurement on the OLED display. So that might be very handy when running a card on LN2 and so on. I'm not sure why the frame rate thing doesn't work. Well, it doesn't really matter. So let's let's test now by putting the uh, putting the cooling fans on auto and see where does the temperature get during 3D Mark Port Royal uh, on its own. So now the fans are running at 100%, and we are not exceeding 50 degrees Celsius on the actual GPU. So that's a very good result, if you ask me. But of course should be testing the temperatures in some very long duration test like looping unit in heaven or some other test to really see the temperatures like 3D Mark Time Spy and so on. Okay, so I just passed 20 loops in Time Spy stress test with, uh, which only uh, loops the graphics uh, card uh, parts of the actual test so it doesn't do the CPU test. So uh, I didn't really see when I was looking at the OLED display during the runs, I didn't see the GPU die temperature to exceed 51 degrees Celsius. And if we look at the GPU temperature first, the maximum uh, on this probe was 52 degrees. And let's just check the... Uh, because the GPU temperature is not the only thing that could he uh, heat up. So let's check the maximums of the memory. 56, 63... 
or that, so the MEMS were 56, 63 and 48. So considering that the uh, fan of the uh, heatsink shroud that cools the uh, VRM parts of the card as well as the memory was in completely passive mode throughout the tests, that's a very good result if you ask me. So uh, the uh, radiator fans were running at 25% and the uh, uh, card fan was at zero throughout the whole time. So you can see uh, over here, so fan speed was auto fan one, which is the radiator fans, 25 and fan two, zero. Of course it will ramp up if needed be. And the VRM temperatures were at 50, 45, 53, 34, 37. So nothing at all. So have to say that the cooling solution of this particular graphics card is truly awesome, to say the least. So, uh, considering that it was pulling like well beyond 400 watts constantly uh, for 20 loops, I think uh, that took like, not, not sure like how long, is it like one minute per loop or two minutes, so that's like, a half, or, uh, like half an hour or so. Those temperatures are nothing. So very good cooling solution if you ask me. Of course, this card is really made for overclocking, and that's what the card is all about. But really, the NVIDIA limitations really hurt. They really hurt every vendor uh, uh, for now. I mean, nowadays, because NVIDIA doesn't allow like serious overclocking of their GPUs. So, as soon as you as soon as you touch the GPU voltage, it will start to throttle the card down. So. Uh, we can quickly try. I was already uh, doing some very quick tests before this. So, uh, oh damn, I forgot to save the uh, temperatures, but yeah. So, what we can do is that we can try. So let's open up Precision X, uh, Precision X1 and let's put 120 and let's put 1600 over here. Apply. And if we open GPU Z, the stock clock of the memory is like 1219. So 1419 is already a very tough overclock. Most of the most of the cards out there, even the very like flagship models, they really need a lot of like bump on the memory voltage to run uh, 1400 plus on the memory. And if I'm correct, the GPU should be boosting like 2150, maybe 2200 depends on the part of the workload because it really moves constantly the clock we set is not like a constant value so it will drop down during the test and it will sometimes peak way up so let's just see can we pass poor royal but uh, i think the cons uh, consistent clock during the test should be somewhere around, uh, somewhere around like 21x 21xx like 2150 but we'll see yeah, it's funny. Now, when I was running the card completely at stock, so even with the cooling solution at stock, the card at the heatsink assembly, at the shroud, I mean, was not even running during the test, and I got the best score this far. So 14,896. Didn't see any throttling. The maximum uh, wattage value I saw during the run was like a bit under 450 watts. But that's really the limit. After 450 to 500, it starts to throttle down. And the maximum temperature at the GPU die was 50 and half degrees. So the maximum clock was 2205. Maximum memory, 1419, as that doesn't change. And maximum temperature, 51. And does this actually work? 256, board, power draw. 461 watts was the maximum power draw on the whole uh, card and 51 that is actually GPU 2 temperature measurement but yeah no no real difference over here so the VRM and memory temperatures have been just fine during this test so 14.89 
4896. We can try to increase the clocks a little bit more. So let's just save. So I will just save this one and then we can try to go on even further. So let's try. So what we can do is we can go back to precision x1. Let's put 140. Let's put 1800. But this might not work anymore. And still, stock settings on the fan just max out the power target and the uh, GPU temperature. So let's close that one. Port Royal. And I will reopen the GPU-Z so that we can actually see the maximum temperatures of this particular run. So run. But I fear it will not, it will not go. So I think it will crash within the first 10 seconds of the test. Okay, so it failed after like 10 seconds. It was a memory error. So plus 1800 on the memory is not, it's not stable anymore with just uh, passive cooling on the card. With the fan at 100%, I could pass it a few, a few times already when I was testing the card before this video. So that's definitely doable, but it needs some uh, cooling on the memory and on the VRM. Okay, so now it's running at plus 145 on the GPU and plus 1625 on the memory. 1650 was very close call on the memory. It crashed during the very last seconds of the test. And that's pretty much the limit for passive or semi-passive uh, cooling. So uh, if we look at the card itself, 51.5 degrees Celsius on the GPU die. And yeah, the voltages are jumping all over the place. The cooling fan of the Heat, uh, heatsink assembly itself is running in very minimal speeds. It's not in passive mode at the moment, but it's at very minimal speeds. The radiator does actually feel very warm, so there's definitely go there's definitely some heat dissipation going on. And now we actually passed, and I will swap to the graphics. I will swap to the capture card once again. Almost 15k. So 14948 max 2220, no change whatsoever. 1422, 52, and 62 on the memory, it's actually quite warm. So it's no wonder why it's near, nearly crashing. Because apparently keeping that memory cool will help the overclocks a lot on this generation. So I really want to break the 15K. So let's go back to Elite X1. Let's put 1630 and 150. Although I think this will fail. Apply. Open GPU Z once again. Some sensors on that one. So let's see. Okay, so now we have a score coming out, 1525, finally. So we managed to break 15k by running the cooling fan, cooling fan at auto. <laughs> 2235 memory, 1422.7 max GPU temperature, 61, 48, 44, 51, and board power, I want these to max, 467, but yeah, 15k broken. I think that's the record for semi-passively cooled graphics card or RTX 3090. Well, semi-passive because the fan only kicks in when needed be. And I really want to 
I want to get that end frequency of the uh, CPU. So power, high performance. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the end. So can't really go much further. It will start to throttle. You will see it immediately if you touch the GPU voltage and so on. So uh, this doesn't really do anything. For special overclocking purposes, you need to get a proper software. So uh, this only has a slider of plus 100. So that's pretty much nothing. So I will try 160. Oh, I want to save this one. 1525 desktop. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. So you can even put some uh, cool pictures, like tiny pictures. So 17, 17, 6 times 48 pixels on the OLED display. So there are many options to choose from what you want to display on that uh, device. So uh, when it comes to overclocking, I really need to fix the power throttling issues to go even further. I managed to do even better, like slightly better score. So 15,177 points. I got this score twice. So uh, on this run, I had the fan, the fans running at 100% instead of auto, 22, 35 and 14. 31.5 464 watts on the whole card 48 so GPU temperature over here 45 max 48 MEMS didn't exceed 46 and max VRM temperature 45 so very good very good result but I think that when I get rid of those uh, throttling issues and I can put let's say like 1.25 volts on the GPU 1.25 to 1.3 I should be able to do at least 15,500 or 600 or even beyond in this particular test. Memory, 1800 is definitely doable, but it needs like a slight voltage pump on the memory. 1700 is usually doable, but uh, it's very weird. Sometimes the memory just doesn't want to run and sometimes it runs very happily. I did pass 1800 once, but uh, it's not really uh, consistent. Sometimes it will, sometimes it will crash like uh, within the very first seconds but yeah so let me know what you think the cooling solution is definitely awesome and the features of this card are really really awesome so uh, the 3090 Kimpin is definitely better graphics card model than the previous 2080 Ti Kimpin although that even that one was definitely good so uh, let me know what you think I know the card is not cheap it's, it is very expensive but so are all of these 3090 models from NVIDIA, so it's not just EVGA's fault, it's completely NVIDIA's fault. What I don't like about NVIDIA nowadays with the latest generations is the very picky rules about overclocking, so they don't allow like serious overclocking and uh, overvolting of their modern day GPUs, so that's a little bit sad. So uh, it will have to do, but we have to play by the rules for now. So. Uh, let me know what you think about this card model. Will you be getting one of these or what you think about it? I think it's amazing. It's great. But the only minus part is that it, it's a little bit clumsy to install and to move around as the whole uh, heating assembly and the card is just so huge package overall. But yeah, so uh, thanks for watching one of my videos once again and I will see you on the next one.